Alright, so while I think that most people should have had at least one usable deck for the Xyz Link Festival, the Extra Deck Zero Festival might be a bit of a different story because, I, I mean, how, how l l let's be honest, how many decks do you own that could get away with not using an extra deck, right? Uh, probably not many. I will say this though, it's because, it's because, you know, the, the, the restrictions, the ban list is so restrictive in this particular event, is that you don't have to have an as high of a standard for what tech you play for the X-Zero event. This is going to be a much lower power level event compared to, say, the x season Link Festival. So while your deck will most likely not be perfect, far from it, uh, it's, it's neither will your opponents. So just, you know, just keep that in mind. You know, if, if you have any sort of deck where it's basically capable of summoning out big bunguses and big monsters beat face and plus a bunch of staples, you'll, you'll probably do all right with, for this event, okay? So it, it's fine, don't worry. I, I am going to showcase you, however, some of the may, either the best decks for this event or decks that you might expect to see a lot of. And, well, <laughs> look, there's no, there, let's just get to it. There's, there's no there's no sugar coating this. So it's an extra deck zero festival. So um, I was shocked that they kept the flu. <laughs> like, like I, I'm, I am amazed because if you look search for the cash cards, the cash tier cards are mainly all all gone. There's no Fenner. There's no unicorn you know none of that stuff but flu a deck that uses the extra deck even less than cash for some reason they want to keep this legal and i know i realize this is not at full power it's uh crucially flu is missing their trap card once again they're uh dreaming town so they don't have a access to a searchable quick play normal summon on your turn but uh as was shown in the past event where flu, where uh, flu was completely legal, besides that trap card, flu is still going to be playable even even without their uh, main end pin search. Because you still have map, you still have all the main deck monsters. I'm I'm amazed you have all the main deck monsters. Like the only main deck monster they banned was Apex Avion, which you know you just replaced with a second Ryza, and there there you go. <laughs> sim sim simple as that. Actually, now looking at it, maybe you also play uh, Snow just because uh, we were playing Small World. So if you play the Snow, it makes the Small World bitches easier because now you can, no matter which you small which bird you Small World away, you can uh, access whichever bird you want. So yeah, we, we removed the trap. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think this trap is particularly going to be that great this event. You know, there's going to be probably less special something, but uh, yeah. So th this is Flu. Now theoretically, you can play this as a budget deck, but Honestly, I probably wouldn't recommend playing this if you don't own the UR, specifically the Swallow's Calorie. Because, oh yeah, yeah I forgot to men mention, they, they banned two flu cards, not just the track card. They also banned the Advent Adventure, the Quick Play spell. So obviously without the Quick Play spell, you're actually missing quite a bit of consistency. So if you don't actually own Swallow's Calorie plus the Gold Sarks, I might not actually consider playing this deck because your consistency is going to be uh, down the drain. However, you, if you do own Swallow's Calorie and Gold Sark, that means you're a certified flu enjoyer. And I mean, don't worry. All, all my flu fanboys can play flu during this event. No, no issue right there. You, you win the coin flip. You go first. You normal summon Rabina. Your opponent probably leaves. So yeah, it'll be quick and easy. And there's, I, I mean, for the the deck list, there's really not much to say. This is like a very typical flu list. So we have the one DD Crow, which is searchable. Then you have uh, three Rabina, three Eaglin. Two Street, two, two, uh, two Can. You run at least two of these because we're running Jack in hand for consistency. Now, I will say, it would be really funny if you're just playing the mirror and you just give your opponent a free Rabina. Like that. <laughs> That's something that can definitely happen because I suspect Flu is going to be a very popular deck. Not even because it's going to be the best deck or anything. This may not be the best deck. It's, it's going to be a good deck for this event, but it's just people, Master Duel players are just really just just very very creative in their deck choices for events and if they if they if master players see a deck they own they already own that's legal for the event they're not gonna build something new like why would you spend the time right <laughs> they're just gonna play what they know which everyone knows what flu is so that's gonna be another reason to contribute to flu's popularity now 
All, all I'm saying is, if you want people to play less flu and play other decks, you know, may, maybe send them this video, right? Uh, send them my, my event videos, and uh, give them some ideas on other decks to play besides this shit. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so mo 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 moving on. Uh, Triple Ash, I, I'm i not sure how good hand traps are going to be, to, to be honest. Like, I really don't know how how hand traps, how important hand traps are going to be. Like, there might be some matchups where you want more hand traps in like against flu but then there's gonna be a lot of decks where it's just gonna be summon one big monster pass and then it's like why why do i have all these fucking veilers and imprints in my hand that don't do anything but yeah preliminarily i know a at least ash will be good that's uh there's other uh, even against the slow paced decks ash always hits something like uh e e even against something like eldritch like hit the sanguine but uh yeah the two to four, uh, the three to four tributes, uh, snow is probably not necessary. Uh, if you want to run another small world bitch, like maybe run roll instead. If you don't own the UR flu, that's fine. Just just make sure you have something to small world bridge every bird into every other bird. Then uh yeah, M pen two gold sarks, gold sark, gold sark plus any bird is combo. So like any one of these, uh, ten plus jack in a hand plus small world so like basically gold sark is uh basically uh, it contributes to a uh, full combo with any engine piece that's why uh it's in here uh pod duality uh do not make the mistake of putting prosperity and extravagance in here i know there's going to be at least one person that sees oh oh uh pot well, what's this pot of extravagance and pot of prosperity are on are are legal i'm gonna put these in and then and then they're gonna open them and they're gonna be like oh Right. There's reason these are legal. So yeah, this is the only pot that's playable. That's why we're up, that's why we're running two gold sparks for consistency. You know, triple jack in the hand. Give your opponent Rubina in the mirror match. That's always that's gonna happen if you play this deck. Uh, small world, um, one map, one unexplored wins. That's what this card is called. Maybe you could run two to be honest. Although it's probably not as necessary because if you're not running the the trap search, you're you're most likely you're gonna be searching unexplored wins a lot more, so you're actually gonna access this more than you normally would. So yeah, that's fine. Uh, Triple Cosmic Cyclone. There's, I don't know how important spell trap removal is gonna be. I know there's gonna be very juicy targets to hit uh, with Cosmic Cyclone. So, and you might see some uh, examples of those uh, in the later in uh, later decks I show for this event. So. Yeah, ma Cosmic is like a flex spot. You could run a hand trap in this place. You could run other stuff. You could run like Orcus and see what's up to you. Called by the Grave. Also not sure about this. I know it hits Ash, but I, it's not, there's not, I'm not sure there's going to be really many hand traps looking around, although there might be, I, again, you know, there's, uh, if you look at some classic big ass monsters, we have Baylor Drotch legal and we have Eldritch, the Golden Lord legal, and Called by is good against both of those, and uh, you know, there's Shining Sark, which I'm not certain how good Call By is against that deck, to be honest, but, uh, yeah, this is also up to, uh, uh open to change if the, if, if, uh, later, if we learn in the event that Call By is in fact not good, but, uh, it's here. And then Triple Swallows, Calvary, off. you do need this for consistency, like, it's, it's just, your deck is not anywhere, you're losing a lot of cons engine, a lot of power from the, Losing the trap already with this deck, so and uh, the consistency from losing advent. So, I, I'd say if you if you really want to play flu, like I, I don't really even like don't don't hurt yourself, don't force yourself to play an already bricky deck with even less consistency if you don't own this card. And uh, three trap cards, free range monsters. This is essentially just the flu under uh, map, the uh, dreaming town, except it's not searchable. Which is why we're running three of this. And honestly, I've seen people run triple free range monster, triple trap tricks, because uh, th this card is just resolving uh, this and like normal summoning your flu monster on your opponent's turn. In this event, it's it's just uh, brutal. So yeah, there you have it, flu. Not not very interesting, I know, but definitely you're gonna have to expect to play against this deck if you're not the one if you're not playing this yourself already. So yeah. All right. So next. Of course, it's going to be a deck from the newest election pack because, you know, Konami has to make at least one of the decks from the new selection pack one of the better decks to play in the event, you know, just to sell cards, right? We, we all know this. And in this case, uh, for the X-Zero event, that deck is Shining Sarcophagus. So 
This is a loner too, so I will go over briefly like what the cards sort of do and like a general way to play this deck. Although without the extra, I mean, it's it's very simple. Like if you honestly, if you just read the cards, you could probably understand it. So the idea is, Shiny Sarcophagus is the entire deck. That this is if you don't have access to this card, then you can't play the game. So. Uh, yeah, you need Shiny Sarcophagus, and basically this is a Rota for any card that mentions Shiny, shiny Sarcophagus. Oh, holy crap, okay, that's gonna be hard to say Shiny Sarcophagus multiple times in this, this video, but uh, you, it's a Rota for any Shiny Sark card, which means you can add literally any of these cards, these monsters, and then any of these uh, spell and uh, trap cards. So the idea is uh, you have Gadget Trio, which Gadget Trio searches uh, shiny Sarcophagus, so that's like three more copies of Shiny Sarcophagus. If you don't have anything else and all you have is like Shiny Sarcophagus and like Gadget Duel, you will search for ties that bind. And then, uh, if you, as when you control Gadget Trio plus Shiny Sarcophagus, you can use ties that bind that will special summon both Silent Swordsman Zero and Silent Magician Zero because these are the two level uh, four lower monsters besides Gadget Trio, and then. Silent Swordsman Zero is basically a uh, negate on anything that that targets uh, that that targets any of your cards that mention Shiny, shiny Star Copy. So you can, if they if you want to use any effect that targets either the Shiny Sark or monster that says Shiny Sark, this you can negate it with Silent Swordsman Zero. So you know if they try to get rid of the Shiny Star Copies with stuff like Twin Twister or Cosmic Cyclones, which might be played there in this event, or like a Heavy Storm Duster, you can negate it with Shiny. Science Sword, Swordsman Zero, and then the Magician Zero that you summon, it negates a, a spell card or a spell effect. So, you even though the one card combo, you get like a protection for your Shining Sar Sarcophagus, and you get a spell to negate, which is okay. But, you know, for a one card combo, you know, in a deck with zero extra deck, that's that's all right. If you have uh, multiple card combos, such as you open like Gold Sark and you have like a Gandora G or a Dark Magician. And what you can do is, uh, so both Gandora G and Dark Magician can special themselves if you control a Shiny Sark. So if you have one of these two, you can add the other one. You special both of them. And then Gandora G has the effect you can pay half your life point, destroy as many other cards on the field as possible. And if you do, uh, banish them. So uh, ideally, you want to destroy one of the cards you want to destroy is Dark Magician, the Dark, Dark Magician, the Magician of Black Magic. Now, I am not saying that full name <laughs> again this video, but uh, yeah, if this card is destroyed by a card effect and a level 5 or higher monster is on the field, you can special summon this card, then you can set one spell trap card that mentions Dark Magician. So the idea is like Gandora G blows up the field, blows up Dark Magician. Gandora G is a level 8 or higher, is a level 5 or higher monster, so the Dark Magician will summon itself back and then you will place Dark Magic Mirror Force. And then uh, yeah, this is basically a uh, another form of monster negate that well, I've actually not read what this card does completely. So when your opponent declares an attack or an opponent's monster effect is activated, that would destroy a monster on the field. While uh, a monster that I mentioned still assigning targets on the field, destroy as many attack position monsters as possible. And then if you control Dark Magician, which is this, you get to. In I think this, yeah, this card always becomes Dark Magician. You inflict 500 damage to your opponent. And uh, the first time each uh, monster. Uh, each, each monster you control that mentions gold shiny Sark is on the field would be destroyed by battle or card effect. It isn't, so yeah, that's another additional layer of interruption. You, you can add like you can add like a couple. Uh, you can you can have like uh, with a couple two card combos with this deck. You can theoretically end on like a couple negates plus like a another plus like a dark magic mirror force, and then you also have uh, any of these spells as well. So. Turn Science is also a monster. It's basically like a forbidden chalice. It's like a monster uh, negate that also does it have to target if it uh, increases the level of act in response to your opponent's monster effect activation. Okay, so doesn't it's it's actually better than chalice. It's like it's like a pseudo strike. It doesn't destroy, but it can be used on any monster activation, not even on the field. So that's nice, and it, it has an effect to end the battle phase. Future Silence. It's another. Uh, Rhoda, so for a uh, for a shiny sarcophagus monster, so you essentially have minimum at worst future science can search Gatter Trio, which searches shiny Sark, so you have at least nine copies of uh 
uh, Shining Sark, so uh, that's nice for consistency. And uh, yeah, that's like a basically like a general overview of like all the Shining Car Sark cards with like the Shining Sarcophagus engine. And then the second thing I want to highlight is another engine that I feel like will be very popular in this event, which is uh, I'm sure you already saw it. it's the other Sarcophagus engine, the King Sark. You know, why not play both King Sark and Shiny Sark in the same deck, right? And uh, yeah, obviously you can tell that uh, they try to hit this engine quite a bit. Imseti, King Sark, and Walls of the Imperial Tome is limited. Now, I will say that even if this is limited, I, I would still say it's still worth it to run these three. Uh, at minimum, you can fit, if you want, you can just fit in these three in your deck. It, it's fine. Like, no matter which of these you draw, uh, okay, uh, you can always be get a Imseti into the grave either by its own effect or pitching with King Sark, and then, you know, obviously Walls and Imperial Tome can search Imseti. And then, even if all you have are these three part cards from as part of the King Sark engine, you have a recurring 3k beater that wins combat every single time because of King Sark. So in a lower powered event with no extra deck monsters and no generic extra deck outs to you know your King Sark, this is annoying as hell. Because if they try to deal with the King Sark, then they're gonna lose a card off the Mseti. And you know, the Mseti can basically can't be run over, it's huge and it has protection and it comes back every turn, even if they do get rid of it. So yeah, this is actually a pretty uh uh this and the Horus cards are actually very strong as just like standalone cards in this event. And then you can expand it further because uh, Walls of Imperial Tome is a field spell, so you can search this with Planet, Pathfinder, and Metaverse. I'm not going to say that everyone's going to run six copies of these, like, obviously not, especially Metaverse, which is a UR. But keep in mind that King, even though the King Stark engine is limited, you can still s essentially search the King Stark uh, with a Pathfinder plus Metaverse. And then if you run a more expansive King Stark engine like this, then you can also run the other names, because uh, if you're... If you're just tutoring out, if you're just trying to search walls in Imperial Tome, Tom, it's more realistic that you'll actually be able to, you know, get access to King Sark, which means that you can run the other horse monsters. And if you get, if you have multiple recurring huge beat sticks coming back every single turn with beneficial effects that also win combat every time, like that, it's gonna, the game's gonna snowball out of your control if you actually get to that point. So this is a look out for this engine, and. You can even run horse the backlane deity because you're you're always searching the field spell so the field spell can always add you your horse the backlane deity and then this gives you another form of uh it gives you removal every turn it gives you advantage because every time you use the horse backlane deity effect you get a draw off the the wall of the field spell so yeah yeah look look out for this king Stark engine i i feel like this uh king star coffee engine even though even with these limitations uh, it's going to be very popular in this event in one form or another, either like the, just a small three card package or a more expansive package involving cards that search Walls of the Imperial Tome. So next up we have Ancient Warriors and this deck is mainly for my boy Kenny. But most people, when you say Ancient Warriors, the literally only thing they know about this deck is the Link Monster Double Dragon Lords because this is a monster that this was a meta-relevant Link monster like a couple years ago in Tribegate. But, besides this, which, you know, obviously you can't play this because this is a no extra, no extra deck event. But, the Ancient Warriors is just a collection of some of the biggest assholes you can summon in the world. That just ha have a bunch of beneficial effects going in a second. Every single one of these monsters and cards help you break boards going second. And considering that uh, boards may not be that impressive this format, uh, you have the makings of possibly maybe one of the best going second decks, if not the best going second deck for this event. So uh, yeah, first off, we gotta start off with Rebellious uh, Lubu. I'm, I'm calling this guy Lubu. I'm not taking the Japanese translation on this, but uh, yeah, you can special summon this by controlling the highest attack position uh, but it's trying like it's only a highest attack point into warrior monster on the field which is uh you're going to control that because you're not going to be f unless you played the mirror match for some reason i mean god god help whoever plays the mirror match and goes first in the mirror match but yeah basically you can just special summon this if you just control any ancient warrior monster and then this is just the once per turn quick effect destroy non-targeting destroy a face of monster your opponent controls with the highest attack 
Now, if you, if for some reason your opponent controls the highest attack point monster at the end of your turn and they're still alive, then this goes to your opponent. You don't probably don't have to worry about that. Like it's never gonna get to that point. Although, like if you own this card, I probably shouldn't have to explain how good this card is to you. Like this, this, this card's insane. Imagine like a free special summon, non-targeting pop. Uh, crazy. And then uh, other monsters. So Sun Mo, Mo, this is the main starter of the deck. You send one card. You get to add any uh, Ancient Warrior monster from your deck to your hand. Mo, before, like nor normally, you would add Ingenious uh, Druga Kong because this is this deck. This is this card's literally a popular. This this is a popular two years before Poplar came out. So so Sun Mo adds. Uh, Druga Kong, Druga Kong special summons himself, and then you can go into Double Dragon Lords. Except you can't do that at this event. So this, adding this and special summoning this is not as important because all of this is is like a level four monster with one K attack that does have a, a negate. Uh, it has a spell trap negate effect. If you're worried about spell trap, and you couldn't get to access your board breakers, the limited opponent spell trap, you can just special summon this as a safety. Uh, valve so that you can send one of your ancient weird continuous spells to negate a spell trap, which is still uh, still relevant. But a lot of times you might want to just consider adding uh, another monster besides uh, uh, Juga Kong if you uh, just need more gas, right? And then uh, virtuous uh, uh, Lil Xuan. Basically, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, which they most likely will because they're they're going second, you can special. You can send a card and a special summon the Ancient Warrior monster from your deck. And uh, of note, uh, a lot of these monsters send cards for cost. So they can send any card. They, they don't specify Ancient Warrior cards. So if you just have a random tanky on field, tanky stays on board fam uh, famously enough. So you activate tanky, you add any of these, and then you can actually just send the tanky uh, as a card. So it's basically like a free send to trigger your Ancient Warrior's effects. But also, uh, these Ancient Warrior spell traps are continuous spells, I should say. They're, we don't want the traps because they're not that good for going second, but all, all both of these gain, uh, well, ain't this gains an effect for, uh, when it's sent. So this is like the best one because this is the one is, uh, when you normal summon Ancient Warriors, you get to basically add another Ancient Warriors with different names from your deck. And if this card is sent to, this, to the graveyard, you special summon Ancient Warriors from your hand. So, like, you can... Uh, add any of these big bunguses and then send this to the grave for, for effect of like one of your other Ancient Warriors monsters and then this will let you special summon another Ancient Warrior monsters from your hand so you can just swarm the field that way. Uh, this doesn't have that effect but this or this lets you special summon an Ancient Warrior monster from your hand uh, regardless like as its main effect so even though you, have, you run a lot of high level Ancient Warriors monsters I mean it's not that big of a deal because uh, you generally have tons of ways, searchable ways to get them out of your hand. Now, speaking of big monsters, Loyal Guan Yun, this is just, this is basically the Ancient Warrior's Panker Tops. If your opponent controls a monster and you don't, you know, Cyber Dragon, you special summon this and then uh, you can target a, you can just freely target a, a monster your opponent controls, pop it. Also, your mo your opponent cannot target Ancient Warrior's, Warrior's monster you control with card effects while this is on the field. So you, you lead with this, you already get a 2500 free beat stick that kills a monster and uh, they cannot target any of your ancient warrior monsters from that point onward as long as it's on the field so yeah nice and then this if you control two or more ancient warrior monsters you can just special summon this and then it has more effects where like if your opponent controls more monsters you can this can make two battle two attacks during the battle phase so you you can see where the damage really accumulates and this is a uh, cow this is cow cow this is not cow what the hell is cow uh yeah it, it, when a monster your opponent controls is uh, it, not just a monster, if any card your opponent controls is destroyed by battle card effect, which you have plenty of ways to do that with between your board breakers, between your, your, uh, actually your, your monsters themselves popping your opponent's monsters, uh, you can send a card from your hand or field. So, uh, you know, you want to send one of these and then you can special summon this. And then, you know, you either get a free send off the tanky or you get the special off the, uh, three visits. So, uh, yeah, more swarming and, uh, Savage uh, Dongying. So this it more comes up for like when you're when you don't kill your opponent or when you like uh, playing a going first build. Which this is in case you're wondering, this is not a going first build. If if, if it wasn't obvious enough, this is a blind second build. But this is like a masquerade dragon, except it's a 400 life points instead of 600. 
But uh, yeah, if this card is, is special summon, you can uh, add a level seven higher or higher ancient word monster or a continuous spell trap. So you can basically add any any of these idiots or either of these if you're missing these. Although realistically, you're probably special summon this off of one of these in the first place. So like, it's you probably wouldn't search this, but you, you can. It, it's an option, and then it also uh, has the it has the has like the anti tier effect. Like, if your opponent sends your if monster sends your opponent's graveyard, you can target one card in your opponent's graveyard, banish it, and draw a card. And uh, comes up if you're playing against the zombie decks, if, like Eldritch, Golden Lord hits the grave. Uh, Golden Lord is banished forever, and you draw a card, so that's nice. And yeah, the rest of this stuff is just board breakers. Uh, they ban lightning storm, so twin twisters is the next best. A spell trap removal, which admittedly the discard is not ideal because be, you have to, you know, send cards uh, for your ancient words effect. So sometimes you don't have the necessary cost for Twin Twister, but I mean, it, it's it's the best one, like after Storm and Duster. Uh, Heavy Storm, by the way, not Lightning Storm. And then, uh, you know, you have Kaijus, you have Gat Raigekis, and so on and so forth. Ash is debatable whether you need to run this or not, but I mean, considering a lot of board breakers are hits. Um, you know, this is fine. It's, you know, it's Ash. It's never bad. This is one of the, the few good hand traps in this event, even when your opponent isn't playing a combo deck. So, yeah. A Ancient Warriors, uh, you know, just much like the, much like the Dynasty Warriors games, you just beat face with this. So, next we have Eldritch. And I, I know this is probably what you think of first when you think of an event without an extra deck. And, I know that this, the you know, some of the deck looks really troll to spare. You know, the, you got the Lord of the Heavenly Prisons, you got the Eldritch, you got the Zombie World, you know, for the completely counter the flu matchup. But, I mean, the good thing is Floodgates are banned. So, you, see, you know, normally in the trap lineup where this would be filled with Floodgates, instead it's actually just filled with actual trap cards, you know, like uh, Ice Dragon's Prison or Terrors of the Overroot, for, just for example. I'm sure there are other trap cards you could run in this spot. In these slots, I, as well, you know, you have Solemn Strike, no Solemn Judgment, because Solemn Judgment is actually bad. So, uh, yeah, that's why we got to run the Lord of the Heavenly Prison, because otherwise, you you're just gonna get blown out by board wipes if you don't uh, if you don't run stuff like this, because those because you know you can't just run Judgment. There's also the Golden Land Forever, that's a searchable counter shop off the L Land, and then you know Torrential. Torrential is great because uh, when L Lich is summoned, not that you even care if this hits the grave. But it also cannot be destroyed by card effects when it needs summon from the hand. So, you know, Torrential is just free removal in that case. Of course, you got the nine Ella traps. Don't need to run Guardian. We have three Conquistador now. I, I know this was this was limited and semi limited for the longest time, Master. For some reason, don't know why it was for so long. But yeah, you just really need three Wakero, three Conquistador, and three uh, Sanguine, and. Uh, so a random tech is unending nightmare. Depending on the format, this might be really good because uh, you see that you see. I mentioned the the King Sark engine before. There's also the Shining Sark engine, and just you know, just Eldritch Mirror matches. Uh, there, this card might be the goo because this is not. It's a once per ch uh, chain, right? Yeah, it's once per chain, but you can use this up to basically eight. You can use this seven times because you pay one thousand life points, so you get to remove seven face up spell and traps, which is uh, pretty insane. You can also kill your own Eldlands, Eldlands, and stuff like that. I think you'd also you can kill your own Conquistadors and your own Wakeros to get your Eldritch engine in, circula in circulation. So yeah, this card's pretty decent, I think. Uh, may maybe justify running three, although if you ever draw two of this, it's like. The absolute worst because having multiples of Ending Nightmares literally use this because you because you can already use one infinite times already so I, uh, I don't know maybe two is enough and of course you know the the uh the King Stark engine we're just we're not running the ta Planet Pathfinder just for room and then you know there's a room for like one Metaverse Metaverse is also nice if you have multiple Metaverse maybe consider running it because then you can also Metaverse for Zombie World as a pseudo interruption which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, although, be careful though, like, honestly, I, I would try to get Walls of the Imperial Tome first just to get your Imseti for your 
King Stark, and then immediately, like immediately as possible. That way you don't have to worry about this, because then then you can just put the zombie world over it. You don't want to have zombie world and then have to put the walls of Imperial Tome over the zombie world. Like that's that's not that's not good Yu-Gi-Oh. Like you're you're just removing your floodgate. You know? <laughs> that that's not efficient. And of course, you know, you the the zombie world package with the Baylor Drosh and the Banshee, which are somewhat searchable if you control an, uh, an Eldic monster. So oftentimes it's not maybe you can't do this turn one, so Maybe you want to add more ways to get to this, but I mean, it's fine. Like, if you get to this at, if you get to this in like turn two or turn three, after you already have control of the board, you can basically, uh, having a Baylor Drotch plus like all these trap cards and like your Ellen engine circulation is probably enough. And then, uh, the Banshee, uh, uh, you can summon these off of the Elixir. Although, keep in mind that you have to have an Elix, you have to have an Elix monster on the field first before you, you use these and, before you use like sanguine or uh black awakening to actually summon these out so like be careful uh you know <laughs> don't don't try to don't try to get the banshee out to get zombie world when uh, you don't control a zombie monster because then you can only summon the golden lord out but uh yeah you, sh you shouldn't need more than two golden lords honestly you might be able to get away with one but there, uh, there's a lot of spell there might be a lot of banishing stuff because people might be prepared for elich so maybe the second one has insurance but uh yeah this <laughs> So there's not really much to say besides that. I mean, this is just standard Elish with some zombies and the King Sark. Like, just the three three different engines combined into one. Alright, so this next deck, a bit, a bit on the, the comedic side, may, may be the least serious out of all the decks I'm showing you, but it's Vanquish Soul, and I know what you're thinking. It, there's, there's no extra deck. There, there's no Rock of the Vanquisher. How are you going to play Rangus Soul without Rock of the Vanquisher? Without the Rock of the Vanquisher? Well, uh, you you see the, these this trap line on the bottom here, okay? Where you were using a, a trap lineup to emulate the effects of Rock, which is the special summon on your opponent's turn. So instead of uh, using Rock, we're just going to max out on Snow Devil and <laughs> free range monsters. That's right, we're baby. We're, we're flu at home, okay? Flu ain't the only deck that takes advantage of free range monsters. So, uh, yeah, between these two, you should have one to maybe two uh, ways to special or special or normal summon Banker Soul monsters out of your hand. And uh, that way you can still get the effects of your Banker Soul monsters during your opponent's turn without the need to, you know, uh, the, without the need of having to rely on Rock of the Banker Soul. Now, it's not perfect because, you know, Rock does have the other effect of adding to your from your grave to your hand, so it has a bit of a resource loop there. So, because of, of that, we we are I do recommend that uh, you max out on all the Vanguard Soul monsters. Basically, max out on Mad Love, max out on Heavy Borger, and even if you somehow have it, max out on Caesar Values. That way, you can continuously between these uh, Caesar Values plus Borger, you could hopefully always have a, a raisin in hand that you can use to summon on your opponent's turn with free range monsters. <laughs> Like, I can't believe this, like, unironically a card we're resorting to, but I mean, this, it, 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 it's not bad. Like, it's just Rock of the Vanquishers. It's, it's just Vanquish Soul Snow Devil's first effect. And, uh, yeah, it's, and Snow Devil. Don't, don't be, don't, don't, uh, worry if you can't get all three attributes, because I know attributes are a bit of an issue as well, because a lot of the hand traps aren't that great, to be honest. Like, I, I mean, there's Bell, but I'm, I'm not sure how good Bell is going to be. That's another reason for three Caesar values. But even if you just get one, the the one is at least it, it's enough to you know special summon of of Vanguard Soul out of your hand and hopefully you get more acts you depend more on like Jowlong and like Heavy Borger drawing cards and maintaining advantage that way instead of like going Rock of the Vanquisher like you I think you or you want to try, aim to maintain Jowlong and Heavy uh, Borger as opposed to any of the uh, other ones so like uh yeah and Pan Pantera you run Pantera because this this is definitely going to be a spell trap and trap heavy format, so you know having a spell trap removal is uh, nice. Uh, triple Mad Love again uh, for attributes. One you know Dark, even though Dark is probably the one out of all the attributes, Dark is probably the easiest one to access. So maybe not necessary, but also it gets you Snow Devil, which is more important now again because no Rock of the Vanquisher access, and then. Uh, yeah, you know, triple stake your soul, triple small consistency, the Dorindal, which normally w would not be good 
without rock because uh I mean what, what are you gonna do right uh, add add raised him but then you can't special summon it that's why we got the free range monsters <laughs> yeah and then dust devil because because you you do run three snow devil uh you do want a secondary search target off for like a uh, mad love because you know there's no really point searching double snow devil and then you know continue as an also another one uh rhoda harvey duster dd crow I, ash is still good i'm not sure what the next hand trap is i don't even know if you should run another hand trap like crow seems okay against some of the meta you know it can hit the horse cards and grave like hit the one of Imseti, it can hit uh, you no know, Eldritch. It can. It's not good against Flu, so t unfortunately there it doesn't have universal coverage. So maybe Crow isn't necessary at three, and maybe just the fact that it's a dark monster when uh, you need more Earth monsters. So there, if there's another Earth monster that's good to run. Uh, let me know because you already have a shit ton of darks. So that's probably the easiest attributes to fulfill, and uh. Yeah, the, the, the point is that the Vanquisho, even though it seems kind of mid, like, the, the Vanquisho engine, even without rock, is still very grindy. This probably has the still the best resource uh, game in this format, especially considering all the other decks are so are also kind of kind of bad. Like, Flu is maybe the only deck that can out-grind a uh, uh, Soul engine for engine when both decks have their engine going, but, I mean, don't underestimate the fact that just... If you can stick, a, if you can just draw, and draw one with Borger, and then add one of Jalon like every turn, and then you, and then you can just snowball advantage from there. Even without the rock, like you have a, a Caesar Valleys, you have to like constantly recycle. Even without the rock, you can use Caesar Valleys and Borger to constantly put the raisin back in your hand, so that you can constantly use the raisin to continue adding more resources. You can, you still gain like three plus cards every turn with Anchor Soul if you're allowed to play the game, which uh, you you will, I, th I, th I think you will be able to play the game more often in this format just because it's lower powered, so uh, yeah, maybe three free range monsters, maybe this is a bit much, but at the same time, right, like, like if you have, if you have access to Raisin at all, I mean, Raisin plus free range monsters is, is a pretty good combo, not gonna lie, right? And uh, uh, yeah, So those, in my opinion, are some strong picks for the X Zero Festival. Now, however, I know that if you've actually looked into possible decks to play for this event, that uh, there are some decks here that I didn't feature that you think might be missing, and that's probably because I'll be covering those in the budget deck video. Because quite frankly, the X Zero Festival, if there's one thing that this event has, is that this event has a ton, a ton of budget options. In fact, I would argue that some of the budget options available to this event, to you, this event, are stronger than even the the non-budget and the UR heavy options that I've showed in this video. So, definitely, if you're uh, if you're if you don't own one of the few decks that I've shown in this video, or uh, you know, if you're if you if you're a budget player in general, look forward to that video and uh, let me know what you're gonna play for this event as well.